Welcome back, STAT students. We're going to go ahead and continue on Chapter 3, Section 1. And with Section 1, we're going to look at correlation, also known as our R value. Now, our R value helps measure that strength of the linear relationship between our data points. So it tells us how close the data comes to forming a straight line. And because it's measuring strength, this tells us if our relationships are weak, moderate, or strong. So some of the things about correlation that you need to know is that correlation is always measured between negative one, the lowest it can go, and positive one, which is the highest it can go. Anything that is positive means that it has a positive association. So the data points are going to be going up. Um, anything that would be negative would have a negative association. The farther we get away from zero, the stronger the relationship is, which means this is going to be more like a straight line, and this is going to be a hot scattered mess. This is going to be more like a straight line, hot scattered mess. This line will go up, this line would go down. Um, a correlation of zero means that there is no pattern whatsoever. It is very rare to get a correlation of zero. You can have something that looks like there is no pattern and still have a correlation of like 0 0.2. Um, but the closer it comes to zero, the weaker that pattern is and the weaker the relationship is. Um, the closer the number gets to one, the closer the dots come to forming a straight line with positive slope. The closer the number gets to negative one, the closer it comes to forming a straight line with negative slope. Uh, and again, correlation is a numerical way to measure the linear strength. Just because our data is curved does not mean it won't have a high correlation. So be very careful. Always graph the data first to see if it's a curved or a linear relationship before you start calculating and doing all your different tests. So this is just a great example of data and its actual correlation value. So we can look here, our first one, um, where this actually looks a lot like the one that we went in 3.1a, where it's super hard to tell um, what the strength of our relationship is, um, or the direction of it. So it looks like you could probably make it go up, you could probably make it go down, and you're good to go either way. This has a correlation of zero, super weak, can't really tell either way. Um, this one, our second one definitely looks like it's going down, but there's a lot of spread to it. So because it's going down, it's going to be negative. And because there's a lot of spread, it's a weak relationship of 0 0.3. Our next one is a 0 0.5. Again, it's kind of on the borderline of weak to moderate. Um, it is definitely going up, but there is still a lot of scatter to that. Um, so it could be weak or moderate or moderately weak, however you want to describe that. Um, our next one is a negative 0 0.7. So again, it's going down. And again, the measure of the spread is a negative 0 0.7. So 0 0.7 is still a moderate relationship. Um, 0 0.8 is usually our borderline uh, between moderate and strong. Um, this is a 0 0.9. And so you can easily see how just by looking at it, it's kind of hard to tell what that correlation would be. So being able to use our calculators to help like really determine that our value is super powerful. So again, we're going to be learning how to use our calculators to calculate this. So um, this one's a 0 0.9, very strong relationship. And then we have a negative 0 0.99, so really close to forming that straight line. Again, very strong. So um, a recent study discovered that the correlation between the age at which an infant first speaks and the child's score on an IQ test upon entering elementary school is negative 0.68. The scatter plot shows a linear form. Which of the following statements about this finding is correct? So remember, it's a negative relationship. That means as um, the age increases of speaking, So as we move to they get older before they speak, we find that the IQ scores should be dropping. 
So if they speak earlier, they have a high IQ. If they speak later, they have a lower IQ. So that's the relationship they find. Now, this is a 0 0.68. So this is a moderate one, which means it's not always exact. You can have some random things out here that don't quite follow the pattern. Um, so the first statement is, is this correct? So infants who speak at very early ages will have a higher IQ score by the beginning of elementary school than those who speak later. And um, that will have is not necessarily true. There are some data points that could be contrary to that. So we could have some people out here who have high IQ scores that speak later. So there is no guarantees here, which makes A not true. Now B says 68% of the variation. So that's kind of like looking at how 68% of that spread on those dots is explained by this line that I'm kind of drawing. Um, so we don't know that. In fact, later on, we're gonna find out that's not true. Um, and there's nothing we've talked about so far that would tell us that. Um, example or question or statement C, <laughs> encouraging infants to speak before they are ready can have a detrimental effect later in their life as evidenced by their lower IQ scores. Um, this is actually not true. This would actually indicate a positive relationship that by teaching them to speak earlier, they have a low IQ and teaching them to speak later would have a high IQ. So this is the wrong direction for the pattern and also is not a good interpretation that um, direction. Um, we're gonna talk about cause and effect later on. And one of our things is, is that we can never determine cause and effect without going through a very specifically controlled, randomized experiment. So control randomized experiments will help us determine cause and effect. And we'll talk about that more in chapter four. So then that leaves us with, there is a moderately strong negative. So moderately strong, meaning that we kind of have a higher number in the moderate range. Um, negative linear association. So it was negative, it's linear in nature, and then our relationships or our variables are just age for spoken and IQ scores in later in life. So this is probably the best interpretation of it, not talking about cause and effect, not talking about this means this and all of that. It's just really just talking about that relationship there. Because without knowing where this data came from, we can't determine cause and effect. We can't say it's true for everybody. There is so much loaded in there that we want to stay away from. And that's where we find that a lot of people in real life don't understand how that works, how the cause and effect works, how all of this is, which is why stats is such an important class, especially in high school. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna work on making scatter plots. We're gonna be using our calculator to help us out. Um, and we're gonna be looking at the relationship between the amount of sugar and the number of calories in movie theater candy. So we have, um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 different types of candy. So we're gonna have 12 data points. Um, we're gonna go ahead and grab our calculator. And the very first thing you want to do is if you want to be able to measure correlation on your calculator, you have to make sure your diagnostics are on. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna hit second zero and that gives us the catalog option we're going to go ahead and hit the d button and d is right here on the x to the negative one power and it'll drop us down to all the d's and we're looking for diagnostic on diagnostics off so we want diagnostics on so we're going to hit enter we're going to hit enter one more time and that turns on our diagnostics this will allow us to calculate our trend line also known as our least squares regression line, which we'll talk more about in section two. Um, and it'll give us correlation because really what we want right now is correlation. Um, and then we're gonna talk about graphing our data. So first things first, we've gotta put our data in our calculator. So we're gonna go into second stat. Oops, not second stat, we're just gonna do stat. So edit our list. We want to put our X values into list one. Now to save time, I went ahead and I put all my X values in list one and then arrow over and I put all my data values in list two. Now, before I go to graph it, I kind of want to look at what's going on with my data. So when I look at my data, I can see that my lowest 
x value is, I think it's 44. And then my highest x value is 136. So I know that I want to go from 44 to 136, and I may go ahead and just say I'm going to go from 40 to 140. Now I believe I have like 20 lines here, so if I want to break 100 up by 20 lines, I want to go by fives. So I'd want this to be like 45, this would be 50, 55, 60, so on. And by planning this out ahead of time, this allows me to use my calculator to kind of help me make my calculator match what I'm going to be graphing. Okay, now I'm going to look at my Y values. So my lowest Y value, I see a 350. I don't see anything less. So I'm going to go from 350. And then I'm going to go up to... Let's see, there's a 790. I think 790 is my highest. So I want to go to 790. And maybe 800. Go from 350 to 800 maybe. And I want 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I want to divide it by 10. So maybe I'll do this by um, 300. So go from 300 to 800. So that way I'll go by 50. So this would be like 400 and 500 and 600 and 700. There we go. Okay, so the reason why I'm breaking this up now is because I want to learn how to set up my calculator to do this. So we're going to go back to our calculator. Our data's in there. We're going to go ahead and do second y equals to turn on our stat plot. Um, so my stat plot's already on. Um, my graph, the very first graph is my scatter plot. I want my X values in list one. If you don't have an L1 here, you can go second one and it'll turn into list one. Um, my Y list I want in list two. If you don't want, if you don't have list two, you can do second two and I'll put list two in there. I like my scatter plots to be with boxes because they're easy to see and my color is already set to blue. Now I don't want to hit graph because if I graph it, it's going to look all funky. What I want to do is I want to set up my window. I want my... I want to say how I want the graph to look. So in my graph, we decided we're going from 40 to 140. And it looks like I've done this already. So that's what I would go ahead and do. I'd, my lowest number is 40. My highest number is 140. And I want my dashes to go by every five. And then I want my lowest number to be 300. My highest number to be 800. And I want to go by 50s. So I set this up the way I set up my graph. And this will allow me to go ahead and graph it, and it makes it easier on what it looks like. Now, if your calculator doesn't have that gray grid background, you can set up the gray grid background by going second zoom. And what I did is I have my grid line on. So I just go over to grid line. You can do grid dots. You can do grid off. I like having the grid line because it helps me figure out where my dots are going to go. I like my grid line to be a light gray. Um, this is actually a medium gray, but I like it to be gray so it doesn't pop so much, but it gives me an idea of where everything is. And then you can go ahead and graph your stuff on there. Now, it looks like I already have my line on there. Typically, we wouldn't want our line on there. And we would just go ahead and graph those dots. So I can be all like, okay, my first dots are like here and here. So here I'm going to go ahead and go here and here and just start putting those dots in the right spot. So then we could go ahead and describe the relationship. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and try to take a picture of this so I get a better idea of what this looks like. And that's one of the nice things about having the computer is I can just take a picture of that. And it may not line up as well as I had hoped, but we kind of get the idea. Um, and the reason why that's important to me is because I need this to describe what's happening. So I can definitely see that this is a positive slope. My dots are going up. Um, it looks linear. There doesn't seem to be a lot of curve to that. But um, it's 
definitely looks like there's quite a bit of spread there. Um, before I do that, I kind of want to know what my correlation is. So I know if this is a moderate, a weak, or a strong association. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go back to our calculator. We're going to hit stat. We're going to go over to calculate. And there are two linear re regressions we would use. So number four is the one we use in algebra. Number eight is the one we're going to use in stats. So you can arrow down to eight or you can actually actually type in eight. And if you have the newer calculator, it gives you these options. So X list, my L1s, Y list, L2s. Don't put in a frequency. If you want to graph your line, you would put Y1 in here. So in the newer calculators, we do alpha trace. And we see those Ys pop up. I want to put it in my Y1. And then I'm going to go down and I'm going to calculate that. Um, when I calculate it, it gives me my regression equation. So the equation of the line, which will be important at 3.2. But my R value, that 0.0618, that helps me with my strength. So 0 0.0618 is my R value, which tells me that there is a moderate association. It's not weak. It's not strong. It's definitely moderate. So there is a moderate positive linear association. between sugar content and calories. In movie theater candy. Um, unusual points, uh, not really. I mean, kind of not, nah, because there's some on both sides, so it's not really all that unusual. So I'm pretty much good right there. Facts about correlation. So what you're going to see with these types of facts is you are going to see this is where you see multiple choice questions hammering down on the data. So this is multiple choice hotspot right here. Um, both values must be quantitative. You can't use categorical data. So it must be quantitative. If you switch your response variable and explanatory, if you switch X and Y, correlation does not change. Um, if you change your units, correlation does not change. So change units or switch your variables. Correlation has no unit of measure. If the correlation is close to one, it does not guarantee that it's not curved data. You have to graph it and look to see if it's curved. Correlation is greatly affected by outliers since it is calculated with mean and standard deviation. Um, so just be aware of that. Uh, correlation only measures how close the data fits to a straight line, not how it fits to a curve. So be very aware of that. And then, of course, just because it's strong correlation does not imply causation. So just because it's really strong relationship doesn't mean that there's not something else causing that. So we get that with like um, in Wisconsin, there's a very strong correlation between cheese consumption and the divorce rate. But that does not mean that eating a bunch of cheese will cause you to get divorced. That's just a ridiculous assumption. So be very careful about that. Okay, so that's it for correlation. We're going to keep seeing this as we keep moving on in Chapter 3, and we'll see you next time for Section 3.2.